Let's talk about textures. We'll work with the textures as TGA files. From those, we will create VTF files. The pixel dimensions we need to work in are in multiples of 2 starting with 16. 16 by 16, 32 by 32, 64 by 64, 128 by 128, etc. All the way up to 2048 by 2048. We can also create combinations like 256 by 512, 256 by 256, or 512 by 256. Uh, down here, we can start to see the differences in sizes. 128 by 128, 256 by 256, and the 256 by 512. The recommended size for textures is 256 by 256, but of course this really depends on the size of the object that we are texturing or creating. The size of the texture will depend on what model we are using, what kind of detail we want in that model, and how close the camera will actually be to it. Appropriate dimensions for a character can be 256 by 256 or 512 by 256. Working at 1024 by 2048 is going to create a much larger graphic, but also allows for a lot more detail and uh, contrast in the image. So for now, that's the resolution that we're going to work with. TGA files contain three primary colors, which are red, green, and blue, as well as an alpha or opacity channel. When you save your TGA files, be sure that you save them at 32 bits if you want to retain the transparency in the image. Then, we'll use the SDK to compile our textures to the VTF format, which can be used by the game engine. In Photoshop, let's open our soon-to-be texture. You can find it in the database 201 under Pictures, called Agavella Face Map. First, we want to remember to check the dimensions of the texture, which we were just discussing. 512 by 256. Perfect. And right now, since we're working with a PSD, we're going to need to save the file as a TGA. When we do, it gives us the option to save in either 24 or 32 bits. Since we don't have any alpha transparency in the image, saving it at 24 bits is sufficient. Now we'll actually compile some textures. We'll start with Agavella here, and then we'll go back and learn to create one on our own. Open up Windows Explorer, and navigate back to the Pictures folder within the 201 database. I apologize if my Windows Explorer looks a bit odd. I'm currently using a tabbed version, which can make things a bit easier. But it should be all the same. Once inside the Pictures folder, copy the Agavella TGA. And then navigate down to Steam Apps. Your username, Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, HL2MP and we'll paste it into the material source folder which we created earlier. There it is. Now that we have the TGA in the material source folder, go back to your explorer, and navigate to your local drive, program files, Steam, Steam Apps, uh, Noesis 3D, or your username, Source SDK, and Bin. Here, we're looking for the vtex.exe utility program. Open up another window so you can see both locations. In this window, I have my face map TGA, and what we're going to do is drag our TGA file to the vtex.exe program. It may take a few moments, but you should see a screen displaying the results of the compile. Once that's there, go ahead and close it, 
and then look in the materials folder to see the VTF file we have just generated. Next we'll create the face of the character using our own photograph. To do this we must take a series of photographs. We'll start with the left profile, then one at 45 degrees, a front view, 45 degrees to the right, the right profile, and a back view. Once we have our six photographs, we're going to join them in Photoshop and create a face map. This is an example result of the unfolded texture. Here we can see the photograph from the front, the bit from the 45, the profile, and the back. I recommend checking out noesisinteractive.com for some free bonus materials, including one illustrating this exact process to create your own face map texture in Photoshop. Once the face map is created, go to the Database Tool 1 Extras folder for some reference images. In Photoshop, we will try to match our image to one of these reference pictures. When we're finished, we'll follow the path and save it to the Mail Group 03 directory. So to help us choose which existing Half-Life 2 character will be the best match for our new face, open the Database 201 Extras folder, and in Players, we have the Face Map template, which should help us choose the best match. In each layer, there are different faces. These are the different default characters that come in the game. We'll use these as templates to match our own photograph and get everything lined up as best as possible. What we want to do is look for one of the pictures that is most laid out like our own especially in regards to the proportion of the eyes, the nose, and mouth. You may have to test out a few different ones to see which is the most like your own photograph. First, take your photograph and place the layer. Uh, you may have to scale it down a bit. Control T in Photoshop to scale, and I try to keep it more or less as proportional as possible. Now move your image down to the bottom and turn off all but the first outline. Let's see. Looking at the template may be a little tough to match everything up. We can change the blending mode of our outlines to see through the white and make things a bit easier. See if it's any better. Try the next one. Change the linear burn to see the outline superimposed over our image. And this one matches pretty well. Go to the next one, change the linear burn to see the outline superimposed over our image. And this one could work for the Agovella here. Since we're going to be using a model that has already been made in the library, we have to try to match our image to the reference. It may not be exact. The only way it can be exact is if we actually replace the model in 3D which we'll get to a bit later. Now we're going to try to match up the mouth, the nose, and the eyes. Try to get them as close as you can, something like that. It's very important to know the name of the texture we're going to use. In this case, we're using Ted's layout. Be sure to remember which one you're using, as we'll need Ted again in a second. Once the texture is properly aligned, we'll remind ourselves where we're going to save it. So in this case, since we're in Deathmatch Multiplayer, we're going to save it under HL2MP, Materials, Models, Humans, then depending on if you're using a male or female, select that, Group 03, and the name of the player, underscore FaceMap, 
VTF. Right, that's going to be our finished VTF. But to create that VTF, we'll need to save the TGA we just made and then compile it into the VTF format. So go back to Photoshop and save our TGA as TED underscore face map. Turn off the reference grid. And if you look at the texture, you will see it doesn't have eyes. The eyes are actually applied to the model itself. Uh, it can be a bit spooky to look at the texture, but uh, he's going to be just fine. File, save as. Choose TJ. Navigate to C, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Noasis 3D, or your username. Source SDK content, AGL2MP, material source, and here we need to use the character's name. So in our case it's Ted. Ted underscore facemap dot TGA. And we use 24 bit image because we don't have an alpha channel. Now we're ready to compile. Open the Explorer, locate the file that we just saved under C, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Username, Source SDK Content, HL2MP, Material Source, and we're going to drag it to the vtex.exe. And that's it. We're done. It's compiled to the Half-Life 2 Deathmatch HL2MP Materials folder. There it is. Now we remind ourselves again where we need to put it in the HL2MP Materials Models Human Male Group 03. And if that directory doesn't exist yet on your computer, go ahead and create it now. Models make new folder humans mail group 03 paste and there he is and we got him there Now we're going to create our own personalized icon for our guy using an existing template. For now, we'll create the icon using a photograph, but later on, if we want to be more creative, we can take a screenshot from inside the game and use that instead. Uh, in the DVD extras under Players, open the thumbnail template. This is just an image that we've prepared with the specific dimensions for character icons. If the guidelines appear in Photoshop, you can go to View and turn off Extras to make them appear or disappear. Now take the front photograph, scale it to an appropriate size, however you would like it to look. Then we can simply select whatever falls outside the guides and delete it. We could also use the alpha channel to create a mask and leave the background transparent. I've got an example of that in here, set up like the police characters in the game. Now that we have the image prepped, let's see where to save it. Let's save it in HL2MP, Materials, and VGUI, which is the user interface, Player Models, Humans, Group 03. And this is important as well. If we use the Van face map, we're going to save it as Male 01. If we use Ted, we're going to call it Male 02. Joe would be Male 03. And the same down the line, including all the girls. If we use Cho, we would use Female 01. Joey's female 02, 
and so on. So since we use TED, we're going to save as mail02. Switch to our template. And we're going to call it, since it's TED, mail underscore 02. File, save as, C, program files, Steam, Steam apps, your username, source SDK content, HL2MP, material source. And here, select to save it as a TGA. And again, instead of naming it TED, now we name it mail underscore O2. Good. Now we're ready to compile it as our icon. Go to source SDK content, HL2MP, material source, and we compile the mail 02 by dragging it to the vtex.exe program. If you take a look in the Half-Life 2 deathmatch HL2MP materials folder, it should be there. Mail 02. Now you can double check where to move it. We'll cut it from the materials folder and go into VGUI, Player Models, Humans, Group 03, and Paste. Excellent. Now we can test it by starting up a deathmatch game. Alright, so inside an actual deathmatch game, select Mail 2, which is the character texture we've replaced, and you'll see the new icon that we've created. And once we're in, and obviously, since we're playing a first-person shooter, we can't immediately actually see our new face. What we actually have to do is kill ourselves so that we get a third-person view. We'll just find a good place to do it. Select a grenade, turn towards the wall, boom. Okay, so it's a bit odd, but by moving the mouse around you can see the texture looks to be applied correctly. Now let's try one more time. This time with the gravity gun. We'll launch something straight up. And... Oof. Cool. There's a new guy. He's just not looking very happy. Okay. This time, I actually have another player join on the server who has selected Mail02 as his character. If we run up to him... We can walk around and... Uh, Make sure everything seems to be lined up all right. A lot easier way of doing it. Once I'm content, I'll just let him know by grabbing a nice explosive barrel and letting him have it. Boom. <laughs> all right, now we'll walk around, check out the body. Remember that any changes you make in the folders for Half-Life 2, Deathmatch, HL2MP are going to be local to your computer. Your computer has your face, but if those files don't exist on another player's computer, they won't see the same characters as you do. They'll just see the defaults. If you want to share your face with friends, you must copy the textures onto the other player's computer, as well as any other players connected to the network. It doesn't matter if you're using a local network or the internet. If you're working on a shared local network, I recommend that you place all your models and materials 
in this case the newly created face maps, somewhere on the network. From that folder, each player can copy those materials individually onto their computer, and that way everyone will have the same materials and see everyone's custom faces. The folder that you're going to need to copy around is the user Half-Life 2 Deathmatch HL2MP Materials folder. XSI gives us a lot of